You're listening to the Gloves Off podcast, powered by IE Sports Radio, the show that brings you raw boxing debate, with your host, Marcus Los Great. What's good, fight fans? It's your boy, Marcus Los Great, here to give you what you want. Here to give you what you need. Yeah, man. Yeah. Happy, happy, happy Taco Tuesday to all combat sports fans across the world. The world, Craig. The world. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Gloves Off Podcast, your first, your last, your everything that is combat sports. We are powered by IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for the all that is sports. I am coming to you live in a crispy white tea, straight from your mama's basement. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> Before we get started, just in case them feds is listening, all thoughts and opinions of the Gloves All podcast are the thoughts and opinions of Mr. Marcus Slow's great, and in no way, shape, or form, the thoughts of, and opinions of IE Sports Radio. Let's get this show on the road. Gentlemen, Ladies, please tell me you watched UFC Fight Night Vegas. Please tell me. Because it was on and cracking. On and cracking. You know what I'm saying? On and cracking this weekend. Two of the fights that stood out the most were the platinum mike perry fight you know what i'm saying and then we even had a candidate for fight of the year with portier versus hooker you know what i'm saying but before we get started on that i want to bring your attention back to boxing Back to boxing this weekend. If you had a chance, 
you should have got a chance to watch my boy Miguel Birchelch uh, fight this weekend. I told you guys to definitely check the boy out. Um, he's devastating at what he does. And this weekend was no different. He was successful in defending his crown. He is still, he is now 37 and 1. You know what I'm saying? And the thing that annoys me the most with boxing fans is this. The fact that these men put their lives on the line they come out here, they give us fights, and yet we complain. Yet we continue to find faults in an area that has no faults. All this weekend, all I kept hearing about is how Miguel would not fight the other champions in his division. Now, mind you, mind you, Gervonta Tank Davis has left his division. That was the longest reigning champion in his division. Mind you, Tevin Farmer, the second longest reigning champion, just lost his belt to Joseph Diaz last fight, probably about a year ago. Who is he going to fight? Leo Santa Cruz? Did you forget Leo Santa Cruz left that division as well? Did you? So right now, the current belt holders is Miguel and Joseph Diaz. Joseph Diaz has to give Tevin Farmer a rematch. So the only other guy that he could fight is maybe Carl Frampton. And other than that, who else is he going to fight? Oscar Valdez? I mean, that is, that is a good fight. That is definitely something I wouldn't stick my nose up to. But the fact of the matter is this. The man has continued to defend his title the man has cleaned out everyone that is in the rankings for his title. We need to give him his props. We need to give him his props. Yes, I would like to see him in there with Joseph Diaz or Tevin Farmer. Yes, I would like to see him in with Carl Frompton. The fact of the matter is, is any one of those fights, is it game changing? Is it going to propel him to all time status? None of those fights does that. So why are you on the man's neck? That's all I'm asking. Why are you on the man's neck? I could see if Gervonta Tank Davis was still there in the division. I could see if Leo Santa Cruz was still in the division. If those men were still in the division and he chose to duck those men, I would be first in line to chop at his neck. But the fact of the matter is this, those men are not in his division. And there is no reason... For the hate. Boxing fans. You got to chill out, bro. You got to chill out. You're out of control. You're out of bounds in this particular scenario. You know what I'm saying? Let the man live. You know what I'm saying? Let the man live. I want to give a shout out to Mike Tyson. Happy birthday. Turns 54 today. Happy birthday to Rose Namajas. It's her birthday as well. She's just not as well known as Mike Iron Mike Tyson. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, UFC Fight Night was a great event. 
Like I said, um, those of you who missed out on Portier versus Hooker, stand, blow for blow, toe to toe in the middle of the ring. We, as fight fans, were in for a treat this weekend. We got to see Rock'em Sock'em Robots live. <laughs> it was a beautiful thing. It was a beautiful thing. You know what I'm saying? I definitely believe that these gentlemen um, should win um, fight of the year. We'll see what happens. Um, it is mid-year. And um, we could be surprised. You know what I'm saying? We can definitely be surprised. Um, Platinum Mike Perry. Um, he stole the show because he had no cornerman. You know, he had his girlfriend and his longstanding girlfriend in his corner. Um, and he won his fight. Um, you know, basically after the fight, he gave us a rant, um, uh, concerning the IRS. <laughs> Mike, I don't know about you, bruh, <laughs> but there. There is one person I will not, <laughs> I will not put these paws on, you know what I'm saying? And that is the I-R-S, you know what I'm saying? I try to stay away from all fights and skirmishes with the I-R-S, you know what I'm saying? Do what you do, but I would advise otherwise. <laughs> I would stay away from that, you know what I'm saying? Those cats are undefeated, undefeated. <laughs> they are undefeated. <laughs> they don't fight fair. They'll eat you alive, bro. They'll eat you alive. Stay away from the IRS. You know what I'm saying? Pay all bills, pay all bills. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we got more information on Fight Island. Oh, man, it's going to be an Abu Dhabi and the first card that's going to be there is going to be Usman versus Gilbert. That is going to be one hell of a fight. One hell of a fight to undefeated prospects in their primes going toe-to-toe -to -toe. Usman has the better resume because he beat Woodley uh, when Woodley was undefeated he went ahead and beat um, he went ahead and beat um, why is why is it escaping me right now um, you know Gilderman um, right now he is the man of the division and Gilbert is challenging his spot. And this is the type of fight that Usman needs to build his legend. He needs guys like Gilbert to build his legend as an all time great. This, this is the type of fight that he needs. While those guys uh, fight, um, I would like the remainder of the division to, um, you know, basically go in a tournament. You know, why don't we prepare the winner for, you know, their next bout? by having a four to six man um, tournament. You know, I'm a tournament man. You know, I like to basically give everyone a fair chance at the title. And there is no other way to give everyone a fair chance at the title than to have a tournament. Then they have a tournament. 
You know what I'm saying? So I would like to see that. Another um, division that needs a tournament is the 155 division. Um, you know, you got Khabib versus um, Gahey. That's coming up. And you got a bunch of other guys like Tony Ferguson, Dustin Dustin Portier, um, Dan Hooker, and um, Conor McGregor. Just sitting around. You know, we could do a four-man tournament with those four guys. You know what I'm saying? Why don't we do... Uh, Tony Ferguson versus Dustin Portier and Dan Hooker versus Conor McGregor um, and basically see who wins. You know, I think uh, Tony Ferguson beats Dustin Portier. I think uh, Conor McGregor beats Dan Hooker. And we have Tony Ferguson versus Conor McGregor in the final elimination for the winner to fight Khabib versus Gay. Why not? Why not? That will set the tone for the 155 pound division. That was at the tone. At 170, let's see who we got. We got Usman versus Gilbert. And then you got Colby Covington versus Jorge Masvidal. You got Leon Edwards. And then you got Tyron Woodley. Um, I'm going to be honest. I think Tyron's done. I think he's done. Um, there was things in that fight that proved to me that he can no longer pull the trigger at his advanced age. And, um, you know, in the event that we did a tournament, it would be basically Kobe Covington versus Jorge Masvidal versus, um, you know, Leon Edwards versus um, Tyron Woodley. You know, at this stage of the game, I would pick Leon Edwards to beat Tyron Woodley. And then I would also pick um, Jorge Macedal, um to beat Colby Covington. Now, Colby T Covington, um, even though he's a Trump supporter, dude can fight his ass off. Dude can fight his fucking ass off. And I would love to see a fight between him and Jorge going toe-to-toe, -to -toe, talking at smack, you know, bringing it to the backyard. You know what I'm saying? That would be cracking. <laughs> that would be cracking. But I would pick uh, Macedal to win that fight. And then I would also pick Macedal to beat Leon Edwards, which would put him in line to fight the champion um, of whoever would be, you know, basically whoever would win between um, Usman and Gilbert Burns. You know what I'm saying? That would definitely um, put things in perspective. That would also clear it up. There would be no one to say that they were being ducked. There would be no one that could say that they weren't in line, that they didn't receive their opportunity. That is one of the reasons why I love tournaments, because tournaments give you a clear cut definition of who's who, you know? Who's who? Are you about it? Are you with it? Can you cut it? Well, go get yours. You know what I'm saying? Go get yours. You know what I'm saying? It's that scene in Above the Rim where, um, you know, basically Tupac hands old boy the bag, the duffel bag, and he's like, handle your business. You know what I'm saying? Handle your business. <laughs> There's no questions. There's no questions. We will all know who 
belongs at the top of the rankings at that point. You know what I'm saying? There would be no questions. You know what I'm saying? That, that would be a beautiful thing. So what's next for uh, Mike Perry? You know, um, there's a couple of names that kind of kicked around. You know, a name that I think would be good on his resume, if he could pull it off, would be Nate Diaz. That would be a good fight. Another name that no one's talking about would be Jorge, Jorge Mazadal. You know, I yeah, I know I just talked about doing a tournament, but I mean, if you get a shot at Platinum Mike Perry, why not do it? You know what I'm saying? Why not do it? <laughs> why not do it? You know, that would that would definitely be a great fight. That would be a great fight. You know, I would I probably wouldn't pick him to beat Mazadov. But I would probably pick him to edge out Nate Diaz. I would probably pick him to edge out Nate Diaz. Nate Diaz is a beast. Tough, tough, tough customer. But I think that Platinum Perry has something about him that would edge just... It, just give him that slight edge over Nate Diaz. Now, beating Nate Diaz and also beating Mazadol will give him fanfare here in the UFC. You know what I'm saying? Um, those guys, you know, Nate Diaz has a huge fan base. Mazadol has a decent-sized fan base. Um, the guy with the hugest fan base is Conor McGregor. But I see no reason for him to fight Platinum Mike Perry. You know, he's got another road. He's trying to head back to Khabib. He wants to get back in the ring with Khabib. And going through Mike Perry doesn't lead him to Khabib. You know, so... I can't see him taking them roads. I can't see that. Before I got on the mic tonight, um, I was watching boxing on ESPN, uh, Boxing Tuesdays. Um, tonight, if you get a chance, you guys should watch. Um, definitely check out Alex Salito uh, doing his thing. You know what I'm saying? Um, Alex Salito uh, won ESPN's Pound for Pound. Um, you know, round of the year, um, two years ago. Um, so you should definitely go ahead and check him out tonight. Um, uh, that would definitely be, should be on your radar. Definitely should be on your radar. Um, Terrence says, obviously you touched upon this, uh, Dustin Poirier's upset over Hooker. Do you think that it's an early candidate for fight of the year? I still can't believe he took all those hits and still was still standing mind blowing. It was mind blowing, but I don't believe that Dustin Portier uh, win this weekend was an upset. Dustin Portier is one of them tough guys that um he's one of those guys that doesn't do anything great. He does everything good. And he's just there. He's going to be one of the top tier people of the division. And um, I felt that for him to show that he belonged in the top tier. Because many people felt that, um, you know, he shouldn't have been in the ring with Khabib. And he showed that not only did he belong in the ring with Khabib, that he could give it to Khabib just as well as take it. Now, yeah, he came up short. Um, but all in all, you know what I'm saying? Um, I felt like he gave a good accountment for himself. And this fight with Hooker just showed, you know, what type of cut he's from. He's not from 
that A plus fighter cloth. Um, that's not what it, where he's from. He's one of those guys that was probably a C plus fighter who basically built up his skills and he's struggling to be a B plus. He's struggling to be a B plus. You know what I'm saying? He's not one of those guys who's, uh, you know, f you know, completely full of talent. He's not one of those guys, um, that, you know, received a bunch of God gift, gift, gift type talents, but he's one of those dudes that works his ass off. He's one of them dudes that go in the gym and bust his ass. He's he's the hardworking man. You know what I'm saying? He puts on his hard hat and he goes to work. You know what I'm saying? He's the lunch pill dude. You know what I'm saying? So I could appreciate him. You know what I'm saying? I could appreciate him because he's willing to give us all that he got. All that he got. You know what I'm saying? And that's all I ask for for my fighters. Give me all that you got. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you're probably in the ring with somebody that, um, you know, their cloth is cut different than yours. They're they're from, you know, that gifted clan, you know. So, um, you know, you, you aren't supposed to, you know, give them any work. But you figure out a way. You figure out how to work your way and do what you do best. And you show up. So I appreciate Dustin Portier. I appreciate him a lot. I appreciate um, Hooker. I don't think Hooker is, um, you know, going through this fight. This shows that Hooker um, isn't a top tier fighter. You know, he's going to be a B level fighter. You know what I'm saying? He's right there with Portier. Portier is just slightly above him. And he's in a division with guys that are like that. You know, you got Dustin Portier who's like that. You got Ferguson who's like that. Tony Ferguson, a lot of people try to make him into this A-plus um, talented type fighter, but he isn't that. Tony Ferguson, Tony Ferguson is a guy that works. Tony Ferguson is just a guy who works his ass off and maximizes his talent level. So that is one of the reasons why I appreciate Tony Ferguson. He gives us all that he has. You know what I'm saying? And unfortunately, the guy that is running the division He's an A-plus fighter, you know what I'm saying? So I don't see any of those guys beating him. Um, I, the only guy that I can see beating Khabib is Conor McGregor. That's the only guy, you know what I'm saying? So that's my take on that. But I did talk um, to a legend today. Um, I talked to um, Fergie. I mean, <laughs> oh my God, I can't read my hand writing. <laughs> uh, I talked to um, Frankie Egger today, uh, former UFC lightweight champ, former featherweight number one contender. And he said that he is at 146 pounds today. He says that he's about 10 pounds away from making his Bantamweight debut. Um, Frankie Egger at the Bantamweight division is money. It's money. You know what I'm saying? The dude is a worker. Um, the dude is a Hall of Famer. And I think that it will only bring more money to the division if he goes down there. That, that will be a beautiful thing. That would be a beautiful thing. What do you think of um, Kama Worthy's win, um, especially the guillotine at the end? That was a grown man move. Absolutely. Absolutely. He pulled that out by the hairs on his chinny chin chin. Before that, he had made a mistake. He had tried to do a Superman punch. He was off balance, got caught. 
he was about to be done in. In fact, me and my son was watching it. I was like, that move almost did him in. That move almost did him in. But he ended up pulling it out. Yes, sir. That was a grown man move, Taryn. 100% agree, sir. 100% agree. 100%. Um, what else we have on the docket? So we did the tournaments. Did the tournaments with the Dead Fight Island, Mike Tyson's birthday, uh, Platinum Mike, Mike Perry. What else we got on the docket? Portier versus Hooker is one of the greatest fights I ever seen. Arguably the best light heavyweight, um, lightweight fight in UFC history. Everything makes MMA amazing was on display in that fight at an exceptionally elite level. Wow. What do you think? Um, I agree to a point. I don't think it's one of the greatest fights that I've ever seen. Uh, because I've been watching MMA for probably, I want to say about 15 to, 15 to almost 20 years plus. So I've seen some great fights. It was definitely up there. Um, it definitely showed um, the grit and determination at that level. So I definitely think they put on a performance for this time. Um, you know, I would like to see um, if it ends up being fight of the year. It definitely has my vote so far as fight of the year candidate. So um, I definitely uh, would vote for it. I definitely would vote for it. You know, one of the key takeaways is that I took away from that fight is just that Portier is um, just so difficult to um, just to take out. That guy, he has a a motor in him that just keeps running. You know, just when you think that you have him hurt, um, he just keeps throwing shots. So at no point in time do you ever know where he is. You know what I'm saying? You have to gauge it a different way. You can't gauge it based on the fact of you landing the harder shots. You know what I'm saying? I thought both fighters had great footwork. I felt that um, Portier did land the more effective shots. Um, but Dan Hooker was no slouch himself. You know, he was definitely putting on an accountment um, for himself. You know what I'm saying? Um, I definitely thought that he put on a, in a great accountment for himself. What do you think about the Herb Dean takedown of Tanner Bozer? That was money. You know what I'm saying? Herb, old Herb was showing you guys, man. He was showing you youngsters, man. You know, don't get out of control in that ring while he's in there. You know what I'm saying? Just one swift move. He'll take you out. He'll take you out. <laughs> Good old Herb Dean. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Yeah, it was beautiful. It was beautiful. Jaron <laughs> uh, says, who has the best performance so far, fight -wise, fighter-wise? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I'm trying to think back. Um, because the John Jones-Dominic Reyes fight was pretty good. I don't know. That's a good question. You got me stumped. You got me stumped, Taryn. You got me stumped. I don't know. Um, but right now it's at the, you know, like I said, it's in the front of the line based on what I've seen so far. Because, um, you know, we just haven't really seen any wars. Wait, 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 wait. 
Uh, that was in December, so it's not going to count for this year. Uh, yeah, we just haven't, we've seen bloody messes and fights, but we just haven't seen a consistent toe-to-toe drag-out barn burning type of event yet and the the one that's at the top of the list right now is Portier versus Hooker so yeah that's who I would put right now on the top that's who I would put But I want to say, shout out to all you who click in, tap into your boy, week in, week out, to the Gloves Off podcast. I appreciate you, man. Uncle Marcus appreciates you. You know what I'm saying? (laughs) Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I also want to give a shout out to all those who submit questions week after week. Um, if you would like to submit your questions to the Gloves All podcast, please send them to glovesallboxing at gmail.com. You can also find me on Twitter and submit them via my inbox at Gloves Off Boxing. Um, You know, and if you want to talk boxing or MMA, I'm about that too. You know what I'm saying? I'm looking for all the smoke. You know I'm the heavyweight champion of the free world. You know what I'm saying? And I ducks no one. You know what I'm saying? So I want all the smoke, you know what I'm saying? And trust and believe, trust and believe that if you can't handle the smoke, it will lead to you blocking me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But before I go, before I go, I was about to go. Before I go, I got to call out Ryan Garcia again. You cloud chasing cat, do you? <laughs> the nerve of you. <laughs> the nerve of you ryan garcia bruh you know what i'm saying you're on twitter today calling out mma fighters calling out javante tank davis like you gonna fight him tomorrow stop it man stop it you're clout chasing stop it you know what i'm saying stop it the nerve of you <laughs> the nerve of you <laughs> We all know your promoter is not going to allow you to fight Javante Tank Davis at this level. And not at this time. Not at this time. He is trying to cash out. So stop getting online. Stop with the Twitter fingers. Stop trying to, to, what is the word that I'm looking for? Stop trying to make us think, make us believe that the fight is going to happen next week or something. We are smarter than that. We all know that fight is at least two years off from happening. You know what I'm saying? You and Devin Haney getting online, acting like you guys are going to fight next. The nerve of you. The nerve. (laughs) The nerve. (laughs) We all know. That's not happening anytime soon, okay? It's your boy, Marcus Los Great. I'm out. I'm on to the next one. Thank you for listening to the Gloves Off podcast, brought to you by IE Sports Radio. Ember.